Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. Uh, one more week to go uh, before the season starts. Hard to believe. But here we are. What kind of season it will be, we just do not know. Um, I'm Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack.net. And joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Ho, also of Fantasy Six Pack.net. Well, today we're going to be looking at uh, ECR, which is the Experts Consensus Rankings, versus the ADP. Now, this ADP is not taken from the Fantasy Pros site. This ADP is actually taken from, uh, Kevin, what's the name of it? Fantasy Football Calculator. The Fantasy Football uh, Calculator, and it's more up to date than the ADP that Fantasy Pros provide, apparently. So, um, but uh, again, Jonathan, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We'll start off with uh, news that kind of affects you before we get into our uh, before I get our, get into our ECR versus ADP. Um, John, uh, Mohamed Sanu, uh, he's no longer with the Patriots. He's been cut. Now, the, uh, apparently, you know, last year they, uh, picked him up and gave up a second rounder for him, but, uh, Belichick, uh, just wants to cut his losses and move on. Yeah, I mean, it's not a, not a huge surprise, uh, for people following the Patriots. The beat writer Mike Rice has, uh, predicted, uh, yesterday that he would be cut. And reports have been coming out all through camp that he wasn't looking good. You know, his connection with Cam wasn't great. And at a $6.3 million cap hit, I guess it just wasn't worth it to kind of keep him around as a as a third kind of, you know, redundant slot receiver behind Julian Edelman anyways. So cut the losses. Cam will, uh, will deal with, uh, with uh, Edelman, Kill Harry, and Jacoby Myers. Kev, any landing spots for Sanu, or is this pretty much the end of the road? No, I'm sure he'll he'll get some... He'll get another shot somewhere. I think, like Jonathan said, the main problem is just the the money. Um, he's still probably a decent third or fourth receiver. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him back in Atlanta. Right. Well, uh, apparently he has a foot issue, doesn't he? Uh, isn't that- yeah, that was his issue last year, which is why he uh, he hurt himself like pretty early into the Pats tenure, and he was struggling a lot after that. Mm. And so the upside uh, mostly goes to Jacoby Myers. I noticed that you put out a tweet there, Jono, that uh, it's... Uh, it got the uh, it's uh, Jacoby Myers season is uh, do you really, it is absolutely do you believe not. That? You should not be <laughs> drafting Jacoby Myers in in any way shape or form not yet <laughs> it's please do not draft Jacoby Myers on my on my account all right so disregard Jono's tweet about uh, Jacoby Myers season all right so but what about N. Kale Harry uh, I think his his workload was pretty set anyways he's like the big body outside guy like the jump ball guy that Cam already has shown he can help fantasy wise with Kelvin Benjamin. I'd like to say Kale Harry is a better talent than Kelvin Benjamin because he can do more than just jump and hope for the best. But we'll see. He didn't show a ton last year uh, in limited time. Uh, granted, he's coming off an injury, so he didn't have a, he didn't have a camp at all. But um, I guess the coaching staff and Cam were comfortable enough that uh, Edelman and Kale were the, uh, as the two main guys. All right. Um, another guy uh, who is. Who is off the off a team, but for different reasons. Uh, Tyrell Williams uh, out for the season. Um, a little bit of confusion with the pecking order in Las Vegas, especially since there was earlier this month or earlier last month in early uh, around August, early August. Uh, they were saying that uh, uh, rugs would be playing in the slot, but apparently is that is that not so now, Kev? Um. I mean, I think Ruggs is the guy that you, you kind of have to move all over the formation just to create matchup problems all over the field. Uh, and we always knew that he wasn't going to play, play primarily slot because under Renfro is in the slot. Um, I mean, Ruggs is, again, he's going to see this piece. Uh, he's going to be on the boundaries where he could use his speed a little bit. Um, the real winner out of this is Brian Edwards, who was moving up some draft boards anyways. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned him last week. Yep, yeah, I think I did. He's a third round pick, big body wide receiver. Uh, I think it'll be him, Ruggs, and and uh, Renfro who make the you know the starting three wide receivers. All right. Uh, you uh, have any stock in Tyrell Williams, Jono? I mean, I did. I no longer do. <laughs> <laughs> As a, a last last round receiver, that was a dart throw, anyways. Hoping he can be the red zone guy, but at this point, cut and cut and move on. No harm, no foul. Okay. 
I guess one of the, I guess before we get to Leonard Fournette, I guess the other, the other thing that kind of put a damper on everybody is that, uh, it sounded like the Saints were putting Alvin Kamara on the block. And that had everyone just, everyone's hair stood on end, including mine. I was like, oh, where would he go? You know, like, it's like, um, but apparently, uh, they're working on a deal. He was back in camp today. Uh, Jono, uh, do you think it'll fall through or do you think this is, they'll work out a deal? How confident can we be about drafting Alvin Kamara after this bit of a shakeup? Uh, I don't think the holdout uh, is going to stop him from playing. Uh, Kamara knows what he's worth. I don't think, especially now nowadays, I don't think holding out for an entire year would help him that much. Uh, according to you know beat writers and all that in New Orleans, they said uh, he came back, talked with Sean Payton. Uh, he returned to practice today, so I don't think the holdout or any fear of a holdout is warranted. And realistically, anywhere Kamara goes, he's going to be you know a fantastic fantasy option. So. I don't think he's going to hold out. And if he even if he gets traded, yeah, the offense might not be as good as the Saints, wherever he might go. But it's still Alvin Kamara. He's going to get 20 touches a game, and he'll be fantastic either way. We were talking uh, um, just before the podcast about this epidural. Um, what's your sense on that, John? It's, uh... Yeah, that worries me more than the holdout. Any trade talk, contract talk, uh, a theoretic or a supposedly healthy you know, athlete in the prime of his career getting a numbing agent into his spinal cord is not uh that's not good that is absolutely not a good sign especially in the back uh back injuries are one of the hardest injuries to deal with throughout an entire season it limits you know everything a running back would need to be successful and the fact that they just nonchalantly threw it out there that uh he threw a put a numbing agent to his back is not that's that would would uh, what would have me dropping him down the board more so than the contract issue Mm. What about you, Kev? Uh, speaking of, uh, if you can just uh, take it from there, where are we drafting Alvin Kamara now? Just the same, no, no, uh, as you were. Yeah, he's still my wide uh, running back four. Um, I just, I don't really see the Saints moving on from him in Drew Brees' last season. I'd be when when Brees is really reliant on those kind of short passes to Thomas and Kamara. He's kind of perfect for them. He's in a perfect spot for his usage. Uh, I like ten days before the season starts. I don't think they're going to move. Yeah, uh, I kind of feel the same way because the Saints have to be in win now mode. Uh, I think they would like to send Drew Brees off with a. I mean, they've had two terrible, heartbreaking. Uh, playoff losses and uh in two years in a row so uh i think they really want to uh make uh this this third time uh pay off i hope and you really need a guy like alvin kamara but as you say jono the epidural thing hmm, makes you wonder about his value there uh kev uh the speaking of running backs the big news of course all this week was the jaguars releasing leonard Fournette. he went unclaimed and we're waiting now to see if uh what kind of deal he gets uh, do you have a prediction of any team that uh, that he'll land on? Um, prediction? Uh, I mean, Washington would have been my pick, but it seems like they would have just claimed him, so it doesn't seem like that's the fit. Uh, I would like to see him with the Bears because I'm not impressed with their running backs right now. I mean, with Montgomery out, it's Tariq Cohen, Ryan Nall, and Cordero Patterson. So the Bears seems to make the most sense to me. Mm. And, uh, Jono, uh, Pat's name came up in the... Uh... As they do with uh, with uh, Leonard Fournette, and some might say that uh, this this move off of uh, Mohamed Sanu might be just making room for another uh, an, another running back. Do you believe it? Uh, I mean, I believe that Belichick at some point will do due diligence and talk to Fournette about what kind of contract he wants and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, yes, now there is an open roster spot for uh, for another player. I will say that. It does kind of make sense for the Pats to do something like this. Uh, as it stands, the running game is extremely predictable. If James White's in there, you know 95% of the time it's going to be a pass. If Sony Michelle's in there, you know it's going 99% of the time it's going to be a run or a dropped pass. So it's Fournette gives them a little bit, of course, the most the more talented back in the backfield and a little bit less predictability. It would help provided it's not a you know Mohamed Sanu level 6.3 million dollar contract. But of course it won't be because nobody wants to claim his four mil on waivers anyway. Mm. Yeah, my uh, the Bucks seem especially interested, and especially um, that they even mentioned it during the uh, during the waiver period where before he would clear. So um, so Arians seemingly is interested. I don't know how he would fit in there, but 
I'm sure he could. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of teams he could fit. There's, uh, like you mentioned, Washington, uh, uh, the Eagles. Maybe uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of Eagles fans wanting uh, Fournette. So I don't know. But I don't know why you want him. Uh, apparently, I read that uh, he wasn't very locker room friendly with uh, the other players. Really weren't. Uh, keen on me, not that he wasn't a team player or anything, it was just like his presence wasn't, uh, he, he was an uncomfortable presence of, of some sort, but uh, nothing went further. That's just rumor, but uh, it came up from uh, from one of the uh, insiders' uh, mentions. Um, but before we leave, uh, we have to talk about the Jaguars themselves, Kev. Um, where are we drafting uh, Armstead and Zigbo? Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Armstead, I think, probably falls into the running back 30-ish range. Um, I think you've probably got to take him around the same time you're taking a guy like Tevin Coleman, Adrian Peterson, that kind of thing. Just because he's a potential starter, but we don't really know his role. Xebo is probably the later round flyer, um, maybe around RB48, probably right after the main handcuffs go. That's probably where I have those two. All right. And, Jono, uh, finally, just to wrap it up. Now, we know that the Jaguars, quote-unquote, are a run-first team, or at least they were. Um, how about Chris Thompson's values and the values of uh, the receivers? Are they still a running team? Uh, I think they'll scheme to be a running team, but, you know, halfway through the second quarter, I think they'll be behind big time. They'll be forced to throw anyways, so they might want to run, but I think Chris Thompson is going to get a ton of dump offs until he gets hurt uh, again. So Chris Thompson is probably the most valuable, uh, will be the most consistently valuable Jaguars running back while he's healthy. And some non-fantasy news. Uh, Kirk Cousins came out and said, uh, quote unquote, if I die, I die. When it comes to uh, uh, COVID nineteen, which is uh, he was asked, uh, he was asked, and he about his uh, thoughts on it. He thinks um, he thinks there's a little bit of uh, like a lot of people. He probably feels that there's a bit of uh, it's over hype and there's a bit of uh, uh, you know that it's 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 sort of anxiety and uh, uh, so he he kind of plays it down and that kind of got him into a little bit of trouble. Um, I don't really care what a player thinks. I mean, he still he still said, and this is the part that that Cousins was omitted was that he says he still believes that people should the reason people should have masks is, is for not for yourself but it's to, for other people. So I think that's kind of uh, it, it kind of uh, got him out of it a little bit. But I don't know if you care to comment on Kirk. Do you like Kirk Cousins as a as a QB or Kev? What do you say about him? I mean, Kirk Cousins is what he is. He's probably the, the median quarterback in the league, the most average quarterback. Takes that title over for Andy Dalton. Mm. And, uh, Jono, uh, the alarmism, uh, does it, uh, is, uh, do you think that, uh, he's not going to get, uh, he's not going to get a Drew Brees type of treatment, is he? Uh, I mean, he was getting ripped on Twitter. I don't, I don't think he's going to get ripped, like, nationally, like Brees did. Because, <laughs> mm. uh, you know, it just wasn't at the top of the list. But, I mean, it wasn't. The con, the con, the if I died, I think was taken a little bit out of context from the full quote. So it's not as bad as he makes it seem. He said he was going to wear a mask. Like he said he cares about the other players and people around him. So it's like I get it, but at the same time, you can't really be saying those things when you're in the public eye like he is. So yeah. dumb comment. But yeah, it's not as bad as people making it seem. It wouldn't be the first time a player said a dumb thing, <laughs> but they do. Uh, okay, let's get into our uh, our main event, which is. ADP versus ACR. Now, like I said at the start, uh, what I did was that I got the expert consensus rankings for uh, for a number of players that had uh, a great dis- uh, had a disparity of of a half round or so uh, or more uh, between uh, the where the experts are ranking and where he's being drafted in the public. So it's sort of public versus experts, and and we're just going to take a look at some of these players and see how uh, where where we feel about them. We'll, we'll do the first three, and then we'll spin the wheel because we've got a lot of names on this list we've got about 30 names on this list. we'll never get to them all so we'll have to spin the wheel for uh to see which which name comes up and we'll each take a turn and uh find out who uh goes so we'll start with uh josh jacobs josh jacobs uh ranked by the experts at 15 current adp is nine which means uh the uh the experts uh are saying uh He's getting drafted in the first round at one at the at the tenth spot in the first round. Um, 
I'll uh, take this first. Uh, you know, I Josh Jacobs is not a warm target for me uh, at all. Um, I'll take him if I have to. He's kind of like if he if he falls to me. Um, but I'm 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 with the experts here. I, I prefer him uh, a little more into the second round than late first round. Just just because of the offense and and uh, opportunity for scoring. I don't think the uh, the Vegas uh, the Vegas Raiders are going to be a very um, prolific scoring team. So I always kind of prefer a team that that has a good offense. And uh, I just don't see that with the Raiders uh, in their first year. Um, uh, John, oh, you first. On yeah, Josh I mean, uh, I'm I also kind of shade toward Jacobs' uh, ECR rank as opposed to the fantasy football calculator ADP. I think nine is pushing it for somebody that has a questionable role in the passing game. Uh, off from the ADP side, from the fan side, I think it's uh, we know that Jacobs is going to get a ton of carries. So following volume is never the the worst uh, the worst strategy that you can follow. Um, maybe it's a standard you know in standard leagues. Jacobs is one of the more solid running backs because you know he's going to get twenty carries. He'll score most of the goal line touchdowns for them on the ground. But again, if you're in a PPR half PPR league. Uh, he doesn't have quite the ceiling that the guys around him do, like Drake and Eckler and even Nick Chubb to an extent. Yeah. Uh, Kev, uh, do you have anything to add uh, to Josh Jacobs? No, pretty much just what you guys said. Um, running back or overall, would you say 10, 12? That seems very high for him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I think we both can agree that that is quite high where people are taking him. Don't know why, but... Uh, sometimes the public is right, though. Uh, Kevin, you can start on uh, Julio Jones with his uh, his ECR is eleven, but people aren't as keen. The public isn't aren't as keen as the experts. They're drafting him uh, about a half a round later, so they're drafting uh, um, at uh, at the, about the, the middle of the second round. So, uh, do you think that's a bit late? I mean, yeah, that's, that's late for Julio. Julio is my wide receiver, too. Uh, I think people are buying into the narrative that he doesn't catch touchdowns a little bit too much. Um, 14 touchdowns over the last two seasons is not terrible, especially if you're getting an average of 1,400, uh, 1,450 yards. Um, he's just as consistent of a fantasy player as you can ask for. Um, pretty much 1,400 plus yards each of the last six seasons. Uh, he doesn't, he hasn't missed more than two games since his rookie season. And yeah, he's not going to score double digit touchdowns, but at this point, who really cares? You know what you're getting with Julio. And he should be going, in my opinion, above a lot of these kind of lesser running backs, definitely above guys like Josh Jacobs and Chubb. Mm -hmm. Uh, John, do you like Julio? Yeah, I love Julio. Um, probably the safest, one of the safest, if not the safest wide receiver available. Uh, like Kevin said, you know, like last season was his lowest receiving yards since his rookie year. And it was just under 1,400 yards. And he scored six touchdowns. Uh, just con super consistent. And you know you have a floor with him. And you won't, unless he's hurt or anything like that, which he not he isn't very often, you're never going to be disappointed with whatever he puts out. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. But I, I understand where the public is coming from with him. Um, he, he seems to be one of the most... Uh, touchdown starved of the of our uh you know our wide receivers that we like to draft but in ad but but in uh, ppr and by the way i should mention that uh, these adp and ecr ranks we are basing these on half ppr so uh julio jones um for him to be going at i th i think uh at the middle of the second round is a bit of a steal actually i think it's a steal to get him there so uh so if people are drafting so if he's uh in your draft and he's still there by the middle of the second round you i i think it's a steal um yeah. uh, moving right along uh patrick mahomes jono now quarterbacks <sighs> Now his uh, the ECR has him at twenty five, and uh, but people are drafting a lot higher, like uh, a lot sooner. Is he is he worth it for uh, like because uh, he's he's not getting drafted? The experts are drafting him like about six places beyond uh, two point oh eight, so that would be somewhere early third round. Whereas uh, the public like him a lot sooner as nineteenth off the board, which is his number. Uh <laughs> You always see this kind of disparity between uh, expert ranks and public ADP, right? It's always experts are always the ones touting, you know, let's uh, 
I mean, we as a community, it's always wait, wait on QB. QB so deep, you know, you can look how much value you get in the 16th round. But then once once draft time comes, somebody takes a QB early, and then everything goes to shit, right? So QBs always go early in public leagues, uh, earlier than they're ranked for sure. And this is not really surprising that seeing, you know, uh, I don't know how Kevin's gonna feel about this statement, but the best quarterback in the league go 19th is not shocking whatsoever. Right, uh, Kev, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, no arguments for me. I mean, Patrick Holmes is the best quarterback in the league, but Lamar Jackson is the best fantasy quarterback in the league. Mm. Um, the, uh, the only disagreement I have, I mean, they're pretty close, but I think Lamar Jackson's uh, rushing floor floats him over Mahomes here. I would have I have him as my QB1. Okay. And with that, let's do our uh, first spin, and uh, here it goes. And I see the name Devin Singletary in the uh, in the square. Um, Kevin, that was your spin. So uh, tell us what you think of Devin Singletary. His the his ECR rank is sixty third, and people are drafting him at forty seven. That's a difference of sixteen sixteen yeah, this- spots. That's over a round earlier than what the experts say. What do you say? Yeah, this is a this is a, a it's a good spin to come up because Devin Singletary is kind of in the news today. There's a report that he and Zach Moss are going to spend or are going to split carries 50-50. and that's you're going to see his his ECR and his ADP drop a little bit over these next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, Singletary is. I mean, I guess he's 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 one of those smaller backs who typically seems to thrive in a smaller role. Uh, he had. I guess maybe why the public might have been higher on him is, you know, he has massive, you know, yards per carry and, you know, theoretically he catches the ball and Zach Moss is rookie. So it didn't seem like he has that much competition, but he's one of those players who coaches won't necessarily trust with a big role. So I think the experts see that, which, and they rank that accordingly, whereas the public doesn't rank him that high. 63 sounds about right to me. He's the guy who I'd want to grab as like an RB3 with upside as opposed to an RB2. Right. And, uh, John, uh, would you draft him like at uh, like six, wow, 16 spots uh, earlier than the experts? That's like over a round. Is, is the public reaching here? Yeah, the, the public is reaching, but I can only I see why uh, in that area you're looking at you're past all the uh, confirmed, you know, like number one starter running backs. You're getting into guys like Raheem Mostert, Kareem Hunt, DeAndre Swift, like that tier of running backs. So I can see uh, people kind of reaching a little bit for Singletary, who did flash a lot last year. But and maybe overlooking Zach Moss a bit uh, and his usage. His Singletary had some interesting usage last year where he had big games and then wouldn't get a ton of volume afterwards. So it's not at 47. It's too high because we don't know how much Zach Moss is actually going to kind of factor in there. Uh, the only thing I can add is that I am a Zach Moss. I'm on the Zach Moss uh, hype train. I think uh, Zach Moss uh, could conceivably. I know Zach Moss, North South runner. Um, that's okay. I think you could still be. I'd still like the Bills offense, and I still think that uh, Zach Moss could uh, conceivably. Because um, I mean, the North South runners, they get the. Uh, they get those. They get those goal line carries, and that's where I expect you're going to get. That's where the money is, right? So I think. Uh, so I'm. A, I'm. I'm kind of high on Zach Moss, a little bit more than Devin Singletary. I would not draft Devin Singletary at uh, at this at this uh, in in this range of uh, you know of, of where the public is drafting at 47th. I much prefer him at. Uh, at the at the later round so uh, but uh, much later than 4.12 that seems a bit that seems a bit early the fourth round the end of the, this is the end of the fourth round that seems a bit that seems quite a bit a little bit early so uh Jono you're up for a spin here we go and the name we've got is Marlon Mack Marlon Mack Jono talk about divisive uh where do we where's Mac? There he is. Alright, so ECR uh is ninety nine and public is seventy one, which again, uh twenty eight spots, massive almost over three rounds difference and again likely because once you get into that area the middle rounds the running backs get very very scarce and the public is looking for any running back they can grab their rb3 a bench running back uh, fantasy pros has him at rb39 so i can see why he gets drafted uh earlier than he's ranked that's just how running backs go um end of the sixth round though 
Yeah, again, but this year has been everybody's taking running backs with their first like four rounds. It's been insane. And all the mocks I've done, people are just taking running backs, hoarding them like crazy. And uh, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, if you don't have anybody yet, sometimes you just have to take whoever's left. I'm a, I'm a zig while everybody's zagging kind of guy. But yeah, with Mac, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the middle. I don't think he's gonna be that bad, even with Jonathan Taylor there. Uh, we've seen some reports coming out that Taylor's having some trouble uh, in the passing game, dropping a lot of passes out of the backfield, and it could open up some some opportunities for Mac. He played well behind a good offensive line, and it's I don't think in- Indy's just going to throw him to the wayside considering how well he performed last year. He's a little injury prone, yes, but if he's on the field, I don't think he's going to be as you know as much of an afterthought as people have been saying. End of the sixth round, would you draft him there, Kev? End of the sixth round is probably a little too high for me. But if you're, you know, if you're doing zero RB or if you're trying to find, you know, a sleeper RB, these are the type of backs you want to, uh, you want to target. You know, pass catching backs who've had success in the past, and you know, a backfield that's kind of in flux. Like there's a there's a legitimate shot, Jonathan Taylor doesn't necessarily work out as well as everybody wants as a rookie and in that case Marlon Mack we've seen him cross a thousand yards the last two seasons so he could get it done but six round is a little it's a little bit rich for my blood his name actually came up in our slack chat room today AJ uh, Applegarth of the fantasy six pack hour he's uh, he's uh, his dynasty team he's very uh he's kind of thin at uh running back and he was trying to make a deal for Mack with uh I think with a couple of, he was trying to trade uh, a couple of tight ends, Noah Fant and, and uh, Dallas Goddard, I think he was. Um, what do you think of that trade uh, scenario? Would you would you trade uh, Marlon Mack for, in Dynasty for, for a, a guy like Dallas Goddard? Uh, or would you hang on, Jono? Um, I mean, it all depends whether how long you think Zach Hurts is going to be the main guy in Philly, right? If you're, if you're going after a guy like Goddard. Uh, he performed well last year as the you know number two tight end, uh, but again we don't know how what, what his targets and what his you know workload is going to look like when the Eagles actually have NFL receivers healthy in the lineup again. Um, it all came down to injuries for Philadelphia last year. They're already looking injured this year, but we don't really know uh, what the tight end two is going to look like moving forward and how long Ertz is going to be you know, there and healthy and that kind of thing. So Goddard's a tough guy to predict. Uh, Mac, on the other hand, if he moves to a team that needs a running back, he's shown that he can play well. So it's a dice roll for, for both guys. But I always kind of, I, I would hedge toward the running back more than the tight end. Yeah, I, I like Goddard for the simple fact that he um, he's playable. And not only that, he's a handcuff to Ertz. So as you, as you alluded, uh, my turn for a spin. Here we go. Okay, speaking of tight ends, the name that came up is Darren Waller. Darren Waller. Uh, you know, I am not a Darren Waller uh, truther. There's a lot of Darren Waller truthers out there. I should mention that his uh, the ECR is 59, and I don't agree. I agree with the public on this. Uh, they're drafting him uh, at uh, in the sixth round, in the, just, just after the middle of the sixth round, uh, roundabouts and uh the ecr has him at 59th off the board and the public like him at 67th off the board i'm more lean towards that i'm i'm kind of want to go late for for tight ends uh i'm not really keen on darren waller i just don't think he can repeat i think they want to get uh uh, rugs the ball i think they want to start using some of these new guys i got renfro and get him involved get rugs involved so i think there's this and and there's kevin mentioned earlier brian edwards too so i think darren waller is kind of the odd man out so i'm 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 not i'm with the public on this i i like uh i prefer drafting him uh maybe even a little bit later than what the public says maybe closer to the end of the sixth round if that if i really wanted a tight end uh kev what do you think yeah waller is a guy that i'm not too high on this year just because last year he had uh, almost 120 targets, and I see that going down since there's actually some confident cast, pass catchers on the team this year. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of fading the whole tight end 5 to tight end 12 range. None of those guys, I don't really like any of those guys at where they're being drafted. Mm. So, Waller is definitely included in that. Right, and John, do you have anything to add to your two cents on Darren Waller? You want him? Um, I mean, if he falls... But yeah, like you guys have said, 57 is kind of high. Uh, the public area, the public 
ADP is a little better to a little closer to what you'd like. Even at the end of last season, uh, he slowed down a lot. The targets went down, uh, or at least his catches went down toward the end of the season. So that's probably more in line of what we're what we're going to see this season out of uh, out of Waller. Right. And uh, so now it's uh, Kevin's turn for a spin. Go ahead, Kev. Give her a spin there. Oh, I think Kevin's uh, Kevin's busy all of a sudden. Did this, this work? Oh, uh, all right. Uh, but anyways, uh, the name that has come up is, oh my goodness, it's Le'Veon Bell. Kev, Le'Veon Bell, that's your baby. How is how is he my baby? <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not Hollywood Brown or Gus Edwards. No, I, I know. Have 50 people I would consider my baby. <laughs> no, it's he's not he's not the guy that really that I don't know. It's put it this way: he's he's his temperature is low as far as my my target. All right, now it's time to quit that. <laughs> Very important person. Yeah, right. run a um, Honestly. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, Kev. Your take, it's 42. The experts have him at 42 off the board. The public like him a little bit more by eight spots more. The public are drafting him near the end of the third round. Yeah, I'm, I'm not touching him. Almost, He's pretty much on my do not draft list. Um, I have him as RB21, that, but that's just nominal because of the touches he's going to get. I, I don't think the Jets' offense is going to be good. I don't think Le'Veon Bell is going to be good. Um, Frank Gore is going to apparently look like the best ba- back in camp, so that's confusing. Uh, overall, it's just not a good situation for Bell. Um, there's not much more to add to that, I guess. I, mm-hmm. He's going to catch a lot. He's gonna get. He's probably gonna get almost 300 targets. But if he's not efficient with them and doesn't score a lot of touchdowns, you're you're definitely just looking at a back end running back too. Well, like you say too, Kev. Uh, he's my, actually I have him at RB20. And uh, what is uh, what are the experts have him at RB21? Let's see. Let's see. Now I'm embarrassed. Now I feel like I got to knock him down a couple of pegs because I don't want I want him to be a little bit lower. I don't know why he's at number 20. It's probably because I. It's probably he was at 21 until I had to move Fournette down. So that's probably the reason he's at he's at 20 right now. So because I had him at 21, but uh, nah, he's 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 definitely off. He's he's got to fall to me, and he's got to fall to me pretty low. Jono, what about you? Where do you, I mean the public seem to like him by near the end of the third, but uh, I'm pref- I prefer much later. What do you say? Yeah, um, maybe toward the beginning of the off season, I was more in the oh he can have a bounce back here, you know, another year in the offense, he can kind of figure things out with Gase. Apparently not. Apparently, you know, Frank Gore, like Kevin said, is going to be the guy or is looking like the best back. Uh, he's already held up for a mysterious hamstring injury, to which he said it was, his hamstring was totally fine. Uh, there's too much going on in New York for me to trust Le'Veon Bell. And even when he did play last year, he didn't look great. It might be because of the Jets offensive line, but who knows? Not really trustworthy. And uh, yeah, like you said, he'd have to fall pretty far. Yeah, uh, I even think 42nd off the board is a little bit a little bit on the high side. Um, I, he's, he's definitely a cold target. Um, I guess we're I guess we're ready. John, it's your turn to uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Here we go. Oh, we've, oh, we've done him. We're gonna have to do another one. <laughs> Come on, big money, baby. Let's go, big money. Well, what I got? Oh, uh, I'll give you one. Juju Smith Schuster. Okay. Uh, ECR thirty four. Current public ADP according to Fantasy Football Calculator forty one. Uh, I'm with the experts on this one. I think Juju had a lot of trouble last year with injuries and you know absolute non quarterbacks playing for the Steelers after Ben Roethlisberger went down. Big Ben is supposedly healthy this year. Uh, Juju gets his QB back. He no longer has to catch passes from Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph and whoever else attempted to play back there. It was bad. James Conner's healthy. The offense as a whole is going to be much better, and Juju's going to have a uh, a good bounce back year. Mm. Uh, Kev, do you agree? Yeah, I mean, everything Jonathan said there is pretty much right. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster is the most productive, youngest r- wide receiver in history, uh, and I don't think it's a fluke. I don't think it's a product of being the wide receiver to Antonio Brown. Um, he's just a talented dude, and I think uh, the Steelers are going to bounce back this season as much as I hate to admit it, and Juju is going to be a big part of that. Oh, yeah, of course, you're a hated rival, but I, I'm i a little bit lean toward the uh, public on this one. I'm not as keen. 
um, the public are taking them at. Now, you might think that, uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards the public for uh, about middle of the fourth round. I th- I, I'm pretty... I'm pretty comfortable about taking him there. Uh, there's, there's, I just don't feel there's upside. What with the emergence of Deontay Johnson is a bit of a concern. Not that I think Deontay Johnson is going to be overtake Juju. I don't think so. But I think there's, and yeah, there's starting to be. I think there's going to be a little bit of uh, target sharing. So I don't think Juju's going to be hugging all the targets. But um, there's passings to be made. I mean, there's James Washington there. There's starting to, there's, a, there's starting to be a little bit of mouths to feed in. Uh, Pittsburgh. So that's the one reason that's a little bit, uh, has me a little bit nervous about Juju is, is, is Miles to be, because don't forget Ebron's there and having a good camp apparently too. So not that Ben, uh, targets tight ends all that often, but, um, Pittsburgh is starting to have Miles to feed that they never had before. So I mean, Pitts, Roethlisberger, they, he's thrown no problem. Like when he had Antonio Brown, the wide receiver two, like Emmanuel Sanders, the wide receiver two is always successful. There's always enough targets with him to go around, uh, especially now that Juju's going to be playing in the slot again. Uh, he struggled on the perimeter last year, but he's going to go back to the slot uh, and he's going to get absolutely peppered with targets. I I don't, I disagree about Deontay Johnson. Like, he's still just a second year guy. Uh, he didn't do that well last year. Uh, I'm not really sure where the Deontay Johnson hype is coming from. Like he played well, but none of this, he's going to be taking a lot from Juju. Like Juju's a far better player. I don't see where all the, where all that hype is coming from. The hype is coming from the fact that he was a rookie in his first year and uh, he had uh, Duck Hodges and uh, Mason Rudolph as his quarterback, and he still hauled in 600. That's pretty good. He, he had pretty good pickings for for rookie quarterbacks. So this was out without Ben Roethlisberger. So he did very well for a, for a rookie. I mean, a lot of rookies would would kill for that start of their career. So uh, and especially with with rookie uh, quarterbacks, that remarkable actually. How did because about how bad the the uh, you know well, we all know uh, what happened to the Pittsburgh offense. So uh, ooh, I'm up. Am I okay? Here we go. Uh, give her a spin and see what we get. Oh, Will Fuller. So I got to talk about Will Fuller. Well, ah. Uh, I got to shift my, it's funny, you know, shifting all of a sudden from Gigi Smith-Schuster, somebody like Will Fuller. Will Fuller, I have, there's this issue, and just before I could say is that the public is a little bit higher on him than I am. They, they're drafting him near the, uh, near the front of the uh, seventh round. Uh, the experts are like him a bit deeper than that. Um, about half a round later, I when it comes to Will Fuller, um, there is opportunity there. I don't think he'll be the WR one in the, in that offense, but with Brandon Cooks there, Kenny Stills, uh, and uh, I don't know about the the decline of Kiki Kute is a bit of a disappointment. But I, if Will Fuller stays healthy, I guess he could be a. I tend to lean towards the experts, though. I'm, I, I, for some reason, I just cannot get on board with him being um, like like a mid round pick that I that I'm particularly high on. The public are higher on him, but but not me. I, I just think that it's the injury issue that that sort of is sort of holds me back. It's you can easily get stung by Will Fuller, but I mean, there were seasons, yes. Where Keenan Allen, it seemed like he could never stay on the field healthy, but the last couple, last few seasons, he's been great. So Will Fuller could, you know, you know, shed the shed the injury bug. So I don't know. I I'm still I still have this injury. I still associate Will Fuller with injury. He's stigmatized that way with me. I don't know how you feel, Jono. Yeah, uh, Will Fuller's all about your risk tolerance. If you're willing to take a, you know, take a gamble that this is the one season he'll stay healthy, like 75 is a steal, right? But uh, experts are ranking him on the expectation that he's going to be hurt for at least eight games or uh, like multiple games, and that's what you're betting, right? Uh, if you're on an upside team, you take him early. If you don't, you then you don't take him at all but uh depending on the options left like in his area you're looking at uh who are the other receivers in that area like marvin jones who's also kind of a boomer bust guy brandon cooks another houston receiver who get health uh whose health is an issue last year with multiple concussions and a down year um uh, like jameson crowder slot like a kind of a mess slot guy christian kirk who's the number two receiver in a kind of a new offense or new 
with the new number one receiver. So, uh, excuse me. But again, if you think he can stay healthy for 12 games, then he could be a big boom. But you're taking that risk. Uh, Kev, I have him at uh, WR36, which is pretty close to where the experts lie. Uh, how do you feel about Will Fuller 2020? Yeah, I've got him uh, wide receiver 34. Um, to me, it's just, uh, as always, it's it's just the upside. Like, if he's healthy, he you know he's going to produce. He has a connection with Deshaun Watson. We've seen it in the past. If he's not healthy, it is what it is. You can cut bait on him. Uh, you know, you're drafting him as, like, a wide receiver three. You'll find another one by the end. What's your target temperature on a medium, then? Oh, I want Will Fuller. Uh, if I am if I can get him, you know, middle, you know, wherever he's being drafted right now, 82 is, I think, would be fantastic for him. Uh, Kev, you're up. You're up. It's your turn to uh, give it a spin here. Oh, here's a guy that's fun to talk about, Kev. Uh, David Johnson, give us your take. All right, David Johnson. Uh, Davis actually just sent me a take. He thinks David Johnson will be an RB15, this, a top 15 RB this season. So be on the lookout for that. But, um... David Johnson, I mean, he's just such a boring man. He's like in the Le'Veon Bell category, exactly. You know he's going to get 250 touches, but the question is, is he going to be efficient with them? Um, the good thing, though, is that that Texans offense theoretically should be better than the, uh, the Jets offense. So I'd much rather have David Johnson than Le'Veon Bell, even though they're pretty much the same range. Right. Yes, I, I would tend to agree with that. I like... Uh, I, He's a far warmer target than uh, Le'Veon Bell in that range, definitely, because he's RB20. Uh, people are drafting him uh, at th- at beginning of the third round, and I'm kind of with the public here. Um, I would draft. Uh, I would draft him there. What about you, John? Are you are you with the experts or with the uh, public? Um, I think public is probably fine. I know there's a lot of uh, I guess ill will for what happened to him last year, so. Um, again, uh, the ranking from experts is kind of uh, have the has the injury issues baked in on the and the decreased performance and kind of his he didn't look great last year uh, after he came back from injury. But uh, if he's healthy, which he says he is, but you can never really believe the players. Uh, like Kevin said, he's in line for 200 plus touches. And name of the game in fantasy is always follow the volume, right? So if you think he's going to get that many touches, I think 30 is a perfectly fine place to take him, especially if you're looking for a running back in that area. Yeah. All right. And that's our story on David Johnson. Uh, Jono, it's your spin. All right. And you're going to get... See the name here is... Oh, here we go. This should be Kevin first, but you're, but you're up first to talk about Lamar Jackson. The QB2, people are drafting him not too far different than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I got both QBs, but sure... Um, it's the same thing as Mahomes. Like, if you're, if you want that solid, you know, plug and forget QB, uh, you don't have to worry about matchups. Sure, take them early if you don't mind waiting on your other positions. Uh, ECR is 28. Uh, public ADP is 22. Uh, exactly the same six pick difference as, uh, as Mahomes. So it's just a matter of who you prefer and how you choose to build your team. You know, if you're, at the turn and you don't want to wait on a QB, you take your guy and I can't hate because Lamar or Mahomes, they're going to be again, super steady set and forget guys. And if you want to build off a QB, then more power to you. I have no problem doing that. Okay. Homer, you're up Lamar. Yeah. You with um, the public or with the, no, I mean, I think you, you, you can pretty much draft him wherever you want and he'll be worth where he's being taken. The, if the question is just roster composition. Are you willing to sacrifice an RB2 or a wide receiver, probably a wide receiver one or wide receiver two, just to pick up a quarterback when you can get a quarterback much later? Um, the debate is is all up in the air. I think Lamar Jackson is kind of, you can't really think about him as other quarterbacks because he pretty much is a starting running back as well. Um, this is true. Yeah, so it, it's hard to really... It's hard to discuss his ADP because you, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting a super high floor. You're getting a super high ceiling. So you know, wherever you draft them, I think it's probably going to work out for you. Um, I, I just saw a tweet. I was trying to find it earlier when Jonathan was talking about Lamar, but I saw a tweet earlier that the difference between Lamar Jackson, who was quarterback one, and the quarterback 12 was about 7.8 points per game, which is the difference between the wide receiver one and the wide receiver 51. 
So with that kind of a gap, you're at a huge advantage just by rolling out Lamar Jackson over the rest of your league, and that's something that really can't be discontinued. Right. Okay, that's uh, Lamar, and uh, I'm up, and we've got one more one more spin to do after this round. So here's my second to last spin coming up. Okay. Uh, I believe we've talked about this guy already, haven't we talked about uh Yeah, we've talked about it, definitely, right at the top. Okay, here he is. Uh, Cortland Sutton is the guy. Ah, uh, Cortland Sutton. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the Denver offense. Uh, Drew Locke. And, you know, actually, the guy I, I prefer is not Cortland Sutton. I'm more, I would kind of like to... Uh, um, wait late for the tight end and get Noah Fant. I think Noah Fant is the guy who uh, is. I think who Drew Locke is going to most rely on. I'm. I'm not really. I. I don't know why I cannot. Uh, a lot of people really like Cortland Sutton. They think he's uh, great, but I just don't feel like this offense is is going to uh, to explode. And, and 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 I don't think there's going to be enough for him in the offense to give you. Uh, good week. Like he's gonna have good weeks. Don't get me wrong. I think this is where it, where it goes. I think you're gonna have um, what's happened to Cortland Sutton like for a couple of games, and then all of a sudden, oh, good, looks looking good for a couple of games, and then it tapers off. One of those things is like a, a sine wave when it comes to him. I feel this year, and the public tends to agree with me. The the experts are a lot higher on him than the public by about nine spots. Uh, the public are drafting him right near the beginning of the of the sixth round, whereas the experts are, dri- are drafting him more toward the end of the sixth round. So, and I, yeah, I tend to be like with, I'm kind of with the public on this. I don't know how you feel about this, Jono, Cortland Sutton and his, uh, and his prospects. Are you, dra- are, is he, is he on your target? What, what temperature is he at as far as target goes for you? Uh, I mean, probably a medium-ish. He finished last season as wide receiver 17. Uh, experts are ranking him now uh, where wide receiver 24. So kind of makes sense, just given that the addition of Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, uh, Melvin Gordon, who's an established pass catcher. It's um, There's a lot more talent in Denver now, uh, more competition for targets. And I think drafting him, expecting exactly you know for him to finish again wide receiver 17 where he did last year is asking a lot considering how much more talent there is around him and how many mouths there are to feed and things like that so you'd have to hope for double digit touchdowns for him to finish there and i don't know if you can with uh, as you said with noah fant establishing himself there mm. uh kev where do you how do you feel about Cortland sutton are you uh you like him i mean with- no i'm I'm kind of on the same page as Jonathan. Um, just if the volume is going to go down or stay about the same. I don't see – I'm not in on Drew Locke, so I don't really see this offense taking a step. I think if you're drafting him, that's pretty much what you're going to get. But I, I don't think there's going to be much of a ceiling for him. Yeah, that's right. And uh, this is why I would I would rather wait a little bit later and draft like Jerry Judy just for – just because of upside and, you know, like – Oh, this guy's, you just never know the rookie can explode and he's gotten, uh, you know, high marks and he was one of the premier draft picks this, uh, this year. So, and, uh, so I, yeah, Jerry Judy, but again, as I say, Noah Fant to me is the guy that, uh, will probably be most targeted. Okay, Kev, it's your last, your last, your last spin. Give her a spin there, Kev. And we're going to be talking about DeAndre Swift, Kev. DeAndre yeah. Swift. Uh, Swift is a guy that I, I'm pretty in on, um, just because mostly I don't really trust on Johnson. Um, Swift, for me, is... I mean, it was a toss-up uh, of who was the best running back going into the draft, him or uh, J.K. Dobbins, before uh, Clyde edwards Hilaire kind of snuck into the first round. But Swift was taken with the 34th overall pick. That basically makes him a first-round pick. Um, and first round picks as running backs, you know, outside of Rashad Penny, who I still disagree with the Seattle Seahawks picking, they, they typically tend to play their first year. Uh, I mean, the only thing is right now is Swift is kind of dealing with a little leg injury, but assuming that's going to be okay, then I think he wins that job over carry on. And I think he's a do it all back who I don't think the Lions offense is going to be fantastic, but they're going to be pretty good with Stafford. So I think Swift is not necessarily a league winner. But if he's being drafted as RB26, I think he can certainly finish higher than that. John, what do you think about this? Is it uh, carry, uh, carry on Johnson? is He's got to be involved, right? 
Uh, I think he'll get some involvement, but the problem is he was the guy, you know, last year and the year before, and he didn't really show all that much. He was kind of average. Uh, Yars Bakari was never good. The touchdowns weren't that good either. And now coming off a knee injury where he's walking around and trying to play with this massive brace is going to, I don't think he's going to start very well. And if Swift can adjust and kind of acclimate to the NFL quickly, I think he'll, he'll probably end up taking that job uh, within the first quarter of the season, I'd say maybe first half, uh, but I think eventually he will establish himself as the starter. Yeah, well, I don't think it'll, I don't think it's going to be a bell cow situation at all. I think it's, I think it's just carry on Johnson and, uh, and, and Swift. I think it's a tandem thing. The, the Detroit just haven't been running that type of offense. I think they tried last year. And they ended up going to Bo Scarborough. I don't know. Is this the whole thing? It's it's more of a wait and see. But I, I'm I'm not I'm not really keen on Swift. He's I would say he's medium. I mean, if he falls to me, so I'm I'm with the public on this. He's 58 ECR and 65. So the the public are, the public are drafting him much later than the experts would. So I'm I tend to lean towards the public. Uh, I think it's just about right too. Near the uh, the public is near the beginning of the sixth round or middle of the sixth round. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, uh, Jono, your final spin is. Big money. Daddy needs a new Josh Gordon Super Bowl ring. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what uh, John will gets. He gets Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson, John. Allen Robinson. Well, ECR rank twenty four. Uh, public ADP thirty six. I kind of see where the uh, I guess the mock draft public hesitation is coming from. Um, the Bears' offense is not good. Uh, their QB situation is not much better. Uh, Nick Foles is like a slight upgrade over Mitch Trubisky. Uh, there's just really Matt Nagy hasn't done a great job uh, considering where he came from. The Bears' offense has no confidence in it, so he's kind of got the, that shroud around him where people are scared to touch the offense. Uh, he himself is a great player. Uh, he showed last year that he can still produce despite you know a a, a a, not, a less than a less than you know good situation, but uh, he did have a hundred more than 150 targets last year. 154. Uh, he managed uh, just under uh, 50, just under 1,200 yards. Um, but with I don't know, it's tough to say. I think the targets will probably go down a little bit. I think trying to maintain 150 targets is is difficult, especially uh, with Anthony Miller kind of coming on at the end of last season. But uh, I know a lot of people like Robinson. He's a good player. So if Foles can kind of keep the ball going in his direction and be a little bit more stable than Trubisky, I think he'll be uh, Robinson will be a little bit more efficient um, and maintain that area. Maybe not 24, maybe somewhere in between these two picks, like around 30-ish. But I don't really have a problem with, with either uh, with either rank here, 24 for ECR or ADP public at 36. Yeah, the public is uh, beginning of the fourth round, and uh, the experts say beginning of the third round. Uh, you're right. I think it was somewhere in between, but I would have to say, Kev, um, the, the quarterback competition, there's actually a quarterback competition. Foles isn't taking it away, uh, isn't running away with it there. Yeah, that's it's a little interesting, but... Um... I mean, Foles isn't necessarily like a runaway. Like he had one great postseason run and a couple good seasons, but he's not a, a super cemented starter in the league. So it's not that surprising that they're trying to give Trubisky a chance. I think the thing is that I would Trubisky, rather I'd rather him behind center though, giving uh, for delivering the football for sure. But I think the thing that you we do have to consider is that the Bears move Foles into the starting position now. It makes it extremely tough for them to put Trubisky back in because at that point it's like okay, we've we've basically just given up on you and for them to eventually have to bench Foles and go back to Trubisky would be a pretty hard look so I think they're going to make this seem as close as possible so that if they do have to make a change it, it kind of looks a little bit better for them um, that being said Allen Robinson is is pretty much bulletproof um, the dude put a thousand yard season Blake Bortles and Mitch Trubisky so whoever yeah. comes out of the competition he's probably just going to do it again but if the Bears have bad games that's the only problem I feel with him so I think that may be why the public is a little bit hesitant on on Alan Robinson. All right, time for the last pick before we have to have to say good night to our listeners. So here we go, my last spin. Here it goes. 
And, okay, it's Devontae Parker, okay. Devontae Parker, yeah, you know, I never warmed to Devontae Parker. It took him five seasons to finally put something together. Ah, and the public are with me, too. There are 13 uh, over around uh, later than the experts. The, the experts like him in the, the fifth round, near the end of the fifth round, and the public seem to like him near the end of the sixth round. And I'm there as well. I'm I'm just not a uh, Devontae Parker truther. I'm I'm more of a you know um, I think Preston. Oh, yo, Fournette is planning to sign with the with the Buccaneers. Sorry, Richard, that's breaking oh, right now. Breaking news. Buccaneers. Oh, Tom Brady gets everything he wants. Jeez. What an offense. Oh my God. Somebody, somebody check on Lepresto. Uh-oh. He's, a, he's a Ronald Jones guy. Somebody check on Lepresto. Kayshawn Vaughn shares just drop. I have Kayshawn Vaughn in uh, SFBX. Uh oh. Not good for me. That's not good for me. I have shares in Kayshawn Vaughn. Well, in, in the SFBX, though. So. Ooh, Schefter beat Rappaport by 17 seconds. Oh, well. Come on, rap. Well, no, Rap says per him and uh, Pelissero. Maybe no, Pelissero got it first. They all got it at the same time. Doesn't no, matter. no. It says Adam Schefter right here. <laughs> the raps, the, the rap tweet says something different. Come on. Breaking news Anyways. right on the podcast. Oh, man. Uh, well, that's, it's quite a hefty. You're right. Brady gets over whatever he wants. So the Bucks got him. What's the deal? I uh, didn't say. Who cares? One year, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's a one matter. year? He, it's a one he's year. He's there to... It's a prove it contract. Good. It's a prove it contract. So it might it might be good because uh, Keishon Vaughn might be all right after all. But I actually feel super good about uh, about my Fournette shares in Scott Fishbowl now. <laughs> that's well, a, that's I, a lot of what, goal line. Well, Rojo people aren't happy record. either. So uh, Ronald Jones. Uh, in fact, Ronald Jones is on our board here, and the public says, and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go off the board here. Actually, I'm going to go off the board from talking about Devontae Parker. We'll talk about Ronald Jones since we have this news here. So I'm going to go off the uh, off the board, and uh, we'll talk about Ronald Jones now. Uh, 65 by the experts and 59 by the public. I think the public starts to agree with the experts quite soon now, uh, Kev. Uh, yeah, I mean... With Burnett coming in, everyone stock drops. I mean, Burnett, what was he before? Before he was getting, before he got cut, he was probably running back 13, 14. He's going to drop. Rojo running back 28. He's going to drop. Kishon Vaughn, I don't even know where he was, but he's going to drop. I don't think you can count Vaughn anywhere now. I think Vaughn is off the board. LaShawn McCoy, he's going to drop. Dari Wugambale, he's going to drop. Like, everyone just drops because it's now like a two to three headed back. It's one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad for Kayshawn Vaughn. He's, he's, he's hanging on the radar. That's it. And that's a shame. And, uh, well, I don't know about Adari uh, Ogunbowale because he's kind of a pass catching back, isn't he? Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, so is Fournette. Uh, well, 80 pass. Did he? 80? Yeah. 80 passes, 500 yards last year. Cut a lot. Troubles. Troubles for Rojo people. I feel bad for them more because. Um, granted, you don't spend a lot on Kayshawn Vaughn, but you spent a lot of capital on Ronald Jones, and it takes him off the board. Where do you think? Uh, where do you think we'll rank um, Fournette now? I had him at 14, like you, Kev. Where do we? Where do we start him off at? Uh, I think I start him off at my running back. Let's see, probably start him off somewhere. I'll probably put him ahead of Bell. Probably, I'll probably put him at RB19. He will be my running back 21. All right, so in the ballpark, in the ballpark is me. Yeah, I'm putting him in RB19, just uh, just ahead of Bell, but behind Johnson. Exactly, right in between those two. Yeah, that's where he goes. Yeah. What about you? What about you, uh, Jono? If you were doing the rankings, you should be, you know. Should be on this. Yeah, I should probably. I'll do that for next season. No, no problem. Um, yeah, I mean, I would probably put him ahead of Melvin Gordon or in the same range as Melvin Gordon because they're kind of the same situation except Gordon has a better running back to compete for touches with. Uh, Philip Lindsay, I think, is a better running back than Ronald Jones. So competition-wise, I'd probably just put him there because they're both, you know, proven proven running backs. But Gordon's got better competition. So I might even put him ahead of Melvin Gordon. But that's just me because Fournette's now a Tom Brady guy. So I have to be, I have to be on his side. Mm. Well, folks, with that uh, great news... Uh... And Kev, just one more thing before we go, um, Ronald Jones. Uh, where do we drop him? How far do we drop Ronald Jones? He's R- my RB twenty-four. I'm gonna probably drop him down to Zach Moss territory, maybe, maybe a little higher than that. Yeah, maybe. 
around Latavius Murray. I'll put him behind Zach Moss for now. Where do you have Moss? Uh, RB35. I'm going to put Jones at RB36. I had him at 24. So I'm going to drop him down about 12. Uh, I will put Jones at 43, right behind Devin Coleman. All right. Oh, you have him at 43 too? Huh? All right. All right. Yeah, I'm putting Jones at 36 for now. I won't, I won't throw him, uh, throw him, but, uh, ugh, Keyshawn Vaughn. That's, that's a story for another day. Well, that's the Fantasy Edge. Our last preseason podcast is next week. Uh, Jono will have uh, some sort of ideas for us to talk about, I'm sure, as Jono will hold the show next week. Unless Kevin wants Kevin, you should take a turn in one of these one of these days. Yeah, I'm just here to talk. <laughs> all right, well, I'm sure Jono will have something cooked up. Thanks, guys, and uh, we'll see everyone, all of you next week on The Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody, and good luck with your drafts.